yeah, I it's it's curious to see, and hopefully we get to see it in one of these matches today or in the semifinals just to get a feel for it. But I have to agree with you. I think Pinpoint would win that trade. Well, there's only one way to figure out what happens in this one, and that's to head to the drop. Drop one, Dudes Club versus Russian Jade Falcon on Rubelite Oasis. So the Packers are getting a butt kick. That makes me sad. I'm not going to comment on that. <laughs> You're a Redskins fan, aren't you? Yeah, sad but true. <laughs> I am a mech sad warrior fan. Yeah, of course. <laughs> and uh, I am here to watch the mech warrior. Absolutely. Let's, let's go with that. Let's go with that. <laughs> I'm here to yell at the referees and not necessarily the mech warrior referees. Yeah. And mech warrior, it's the casters who are blind. <laughs> exactly. All right, here we go. Taking a look right off the bat here at Russian Jade Falcon. Looks like we got Black Knight, Annihilator, Banshee, Commando, Hunchback, Awesome, Locust, Wolfhound. Not seeing it very much in terms of LRMs here. Let's take a look here. Banshee, AC-10, PPC, Annihilator, AC-10s, PPCs on the Awesome. So, as predicted here, a very, very pinpoint accurate group. Large lasers on the Black Knight, medium lasers, of course, on the Hunchback. They're bringing a Commando, a Wolfhound, and a Locust, so pretty standard. We've been seeing those three lights used quite yeah. a bit. And it's the speed factor, I think, especially on a map like this, with a lot of elevation, a lot of ability to get the caps without necessarily being in firing lanes. I think that speed is, is very good. So, very interesting. We are seeing a Phoenix Hawk in use on the Dudes Club side. That is interesting, yeah. Can you pronounce his name? Krenim Minerk. I'm not even going to attempt to do that. He seems to be pacing the Wolfhound and the Javelin pretty well. Two medium lasers, a small laser, and one large laser. Maybe hoping to get that harassment. But an easy cap for Dudes Club to Theta. Not opposed at all by Russian Jade and Falcon. That's interesting to see. Not not opposing that. They went both for Kappa and Epsilon at the same time. Now, so this guy at Epsilon, split. he's going to be fast. He's going to be able to get out there, and I think he'll have early warning. Looks like he sees him coming. He's getting that cap on Epsilon, but he's going to get wrong a way lot of damage. Second. Yeah, the, those large lasers are going to help them just continue adding and harassing fire into that Locust. And it looks like they want to keep laying it on him. He needs to get out of there quick, down to 79%. That was a pretty costly attempt at Epsilon. Now, Epsilon still is in their favor, but these guys are out for blood. And if they can get an early light... And they got a leg! Big play there by the Dudes Club group, taking the leg from that Locust and take him down. Wow. They were on the hunt. Cap Epsilon quick. That is a absolute devastating loss there for Russian Jade Falcon. And they'll go In back the meantime, and easily get Epsilon. we've got a little bit of an engagement for Dudes Club. Uh, they are moving up high. Kind of the same position we saw out of uh, Phoenix Legion earlier. They've moved up high. Kind of overwatch over the uh, Theta Kappa side of this upper platform. And in the meantime, they're providing support for a Locust to back cap at Kappa. They're going to turn this around into a four cap really quickly. That loss of that light right off the bat. Dudes Club just needs to keep playing this for caps. Keep rolling the three and four cap as long as they can. It's going to be on Russian Jade Falcon to make a move. And when they make that move, Dudes Club is going to need to be ready to receive it. Right now, they're just continuing to put Absolutely. that long-range fire out. But they are in a position of power. And they're going to be able to do big things with this as long as they don't make any huge mistakes. That being said, Dudes Club needs to pay attention. Theta is being back capped and no one is firing on this commando at Theta and they're not stopping it. They've got to get an angle and get some shots in on Theta and finally they've got a Black Knight trying to get some shots in. I'm not sure it's going to be able to hit him though. Looks like he did get a hit on him. Stopped it last possible wow. second. Stopped at the last possible second, but here he comes back he and he neutralized. flips it over. They still Neutralize hold the now. three cap though, which is good for them, but it looks like they are sunning somebody from Kappa back to get the back cap on Gamma. Really, just being up on those light mechs right now is going to give them the ability to continue staying one cap ahead at all times. And there is a little fight in the backfield. Those three fast moving, the Phoenix Hawk, they are actually up right and behind of uh, Russian Jade Falcon here. There's an awesome coming around the corner, and if the Phoenix Hawk doesn't, ooh, takes a big hit from the awesome. Big play back to that Gamma region. They're sending a lot of mechs. Down. They actually have three lights and then that Phoenix Hawk being the medium. They are focusing all of their energy 
on this uh, cap game, but that's going to put these uh, mechs the for meantime, Dukes Club at a disadvantage over here because yeah, they are actually short of mech. Moving up. The Awesome has dropped down, and he is out of the fight as well, so it's three on three up on the top side with some guys shooting across across the way they need to be careful because yes they've got the cap advantage but if they get wiped up really quick here it might be difficult for them especially if they can split up and station people at all these different caps this banshee needs to turn around the annihilator just gets a free back shot into him he's gonna drop off and now there's only two here russian jade falcon realizes that they send the black knight in Yep, and they he's going in hard. Here they go. There we go. He got the annihilator. The There's that aggression we were talking about last game, where that yeah, there wasn't know. enough aggression. Well, here it is. Now the annihilator here comes is the black knight dropping down. He jumped a little bit early, and he's going to pay yeah, for it. The annihilator early. was stuck behind some terrain, and he's moving so slowly. That was kind of a throwaway on that striked. black knight. And Dude's Club needs to push this annihilator. I think they can't let them get surrounded here the now 4p the coming up behind need to pick one of these max bad shutdown shut down by that black knight the phoenix hawk gets killed that's pretty big to start the pulling this back goes down tickets 200 in favor of dudes club but they need to keep holding it together if they want to take this to the finish it the feels like dudes club they needed to pick either a hunchback or the annihilator to fight here over by kappa and then instead of split off into a 1v1 situation now they do have the weight advantage but they really need to just pick one of these mechs and take them down. That Annihilator like refuses to die, though. He's doing a great job spreading, 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 allowing that 4P to get the kill on the Banshee. He finally goes down, and we're down to the Awesome versus But that Awesome the has PPCs on him. He doesn't have the range. Absolutely. He needs to help. So four mechs dead on either side, but the fast movers still in play for Dudes Club. As they lock down four caps, they're spreading out to prevent a, a recap of as many places as possible. Dudes Club really still in a great position here. That aggression from Russian Jade Falcon was fantastic, but they weren't able to do it without massive, massive penalty. So we've got a fight over Cap and a fight over Gamma right now. 1v1 at Gamma. Looks like the uh, Locust for Dudes Club is going to try and stop this uh, Cap from happening. He does prevent the Cap. He actually has a little bit of the range advantage, but the Locust just doesn't have the armor to compete with the Wolfhound in 1v1, if you ask me. The he's just Javelin, try and delay it. the Javelin sitting on Kappa, waiting for that Hunchback to come back. He's just going to try and prevent the Cap from here. Uh, that Hunchback still has power on him, and he's coming in to try and flip it back. But that Javelin's going to do his best to just slow it down. I don't think he knows he's there. Am I seeing things here? Or is that Hunchback completely unaware that he is not capping this right now? Oh my dear, Terminator needs to be paying attention because he's not getting any ground on this Kappa at all. And another 1v1 fight at Epsilon, a Commando versus a Phoenix or a Wolfhound oh for Dude's God. Legion, Commando for RJF. This is just a series of 1v1 engagements at the cap points. But even still, like that that right there, if anything, like Terminator not paying attention to the fact that somebody was physically standing on the cap and not allowing it to be flipped. I mean, I, unless it's a glitch and I'm seeing things or something. Dude's Club loses their Locust's leg here. Yeah, at Gamma, the, the fight has gone down. The uh, Wolfhound versus the Locust, or versus the Commando, the Wolfhound uh, for Dude's Club, the Commando for RJF. They've gotten pulled off the cap point. Oh, Commando Locust goes down. Back. So Gamma's gonna go, but still with the three cap. This, this is one's over. in. This is over. And it could have been less over, but Sirlon, does he have weapons? He does not have weapons. Just silhouetting on the cap and standing still prevents the recap by Terminator. That could have bought them a little bit more time, but still, I honestly I think Dude's Club had this. But that yeah, was absolutely. that was. Um, I don't know. RJF man. needs to work a little bit on that. That they they were aggressive when it called for being aggressive, but really not a great situational awareness performance by their lighter mechs there. Absolutely. I mean, let's just start right at the beginning. Huge, huge mistake by the Russian Jade Falcon Locust to get yep. picked. They, they opted to avoid Theta, they gave up Theta and went for the three cap on the outside and then losing a light mech. This is gonna be a recurring theme. These, they sent two lights and a me, uh, two lights and a medium over there. 
that must have caught them off guard because they saw that Theta was getting capped early, so they figured, mm -hmm. oh, one of the light mechs must be capping Theta. Maybe I'll have less resistance over here as we split to either side. That Losing that Locust, that set the tone right off the bat, forced RGF to be aggressive, probably when they didn't want to be. Yep. And then just series of mistakes. Yes, the aggression was nice. Yes, they were forcing Dude's Club mechs to drop down. That Black Knight sacrificing himself didn't need to happen. He needed to wait for the Annihilator to get around the corner. Must have been a communication issue. He dropped in front of four mechs, got immediately destroyed. And, you know, that was just a series of unfortunate events from RJF that I don't think we're used to seeing here out of this team. No, I expected a little more awareness, really, out of the uh, out of the RGF pilots. Just didn't feel clean, like you said. You know, getting caught out in a light. Again, you've got to know the lights are important. But also, you know, situations where you're not realizing that you're getting a cap, that the cap's contested. You know, engagements where you're getting pulled off cap points because you're chasing after someone. You know, the Black Knight dropping down, stuff like that we're not used to seeing out of RJF. They've really got to clean it up a little bit here. Absolutely. So, of course, they will be switching sides, and they will be doing another map ban here, and we'll see whether or not we're going to head back to Rubelite Oasis or if uh, if it's going to be a little bit different here. It looks like there's going to be um, a switch out Dudes Club tossing uh, one of their pilots out and bringing another one in. Not sure why. Usually we see pilot switches after the map ban, Maybe they just assume they'll end up on Rubelite again, but we'll have to see how it goes here. Maybe somebody was having technical difficulties, but I... That Hunchback, man, I just keep going back to that, and I don't think it necessarily would have changed the battle in yeah. the long run, but really, even in a losing situation when you pretty much know it's over, you still play to the, play to the whistle. You play to the end of the game, and uh, when he's sitting on that point and it's not moving... Look around. Gotta, gotta Look around. Yeah. There's a guy with no weapons standing there. He's not yep. shut down because if you shut down, it'll start capping. He's just standing there, no weapons, and you just have your back to him. Like, it would have been one shot to finish him off and then switch that cap. That gives you valuable seconds maybe to pull something off. But I think we're beating a dead horse on that because it was probably over already for Russian Jade Falcon. They need to make a change here. They need to figure out what the heck just happened. And, uh, and come back strong if they want to try and tie up the series. Yeah, and that, like like you said, it's really just, uh, that was a series of errors for RJF. I think they're a better team than what we just saw there. Uh, so I think at this point, you need to just take a step back, say, you know what, that matches out the window. This is a best of three. They win this one, then they still have an opportunity to win the next one. Even if they can't quite pull it out on this round, they're still a loser's bracket. They're not out of the semifinals yet. So to me, you just kind of take that, throw that one in the trash, start over from scratch, <laughs> and get back to what, what they know how to do. I know they know how to play well in a competitive setting, so it's just a matter of let's just forget that happened. Yeah, we even had uh, have a conversation going on in the lobby right now where they're confused as to why Kappa was not being flipped. We saw it, and I think once they see that in the stream here, there's going to be a little bit of face palming, but great play by Sirlon there. Yeah. standing on the point and not moving. You know, they, they, they're thinking, that this must be a glitch, this must be a glitch. No, it was a very good play by that mech to sit there and, and hold that point down. So that's one that I think is going to sting a little bit, but it's not over yet, absolutely. Even if R RGF doesn't come back and win the second match here, uh, they've still got the loser's bracket to try and bounce back, and that'll give them at least another week here. And to, RJF to think of takes things. Rubelite in the map band right off the bat. And look at that, Canyon Network, a map that yeah. we haven't been seeing a lot of in the qualifiers here. We're going to be uh, going right back to Canyon. I have no idea what to expect here in stock mode. Like we said, we talked about that this this earlier match, match uh, the first match of the day. Canyon in stock mode, how will it play with the, all the elevation changes and Canyon and steep elevation changes, right? There's a few easy access ramps. There's also some narrow passes that you can climb up the walls, or you could with Max Engine Max, but now how does that play out? I'm actually really interested to see how Canyon does here. You know, we saw Dude's Club throw a little bit of a wrench in it, bringing that Phoenix Hawk. I think that Phoenix Hawk did work. Like, it, did. it basically puts pick. four lights on the field. Yes, you're a little bit t a higher tonnage. Now, 
uh, you know, there's no duplicates in this, so you can't bring three locusts, you know, and it is tonnage based. Uh, so they're opting to bring a Phoenix Hawk over, say, another light, because there are mm -hmm. other light options. But it had pretty solid firepower. It was able to pace the Javelin, uh, and that large laser gives it still a little bit of pokeability, but it has enough pinpoint to be successful in a light duel. So they really were wolf packing with the sole yeah. purpose of getting caps and killing anything that's trying to outcap them. And they did a great job bringing down that locust early on. He, that locust had speed on them, and he was zipping out of there. But those long stretches between cover, they pushed it. They didn't stop. They didn't say, oh, what if there's a mech around the corner? They kept that aggression, knowing that they had firepower with three mechs at their advantage. And they took that locust down no mercy. And that Phoenix off going at 97 kph in stock mode, that's on the high end of speed performance, right? So it's probably have, the fastest medium, like said, isn't it? It, like, it is the fastest medium on the field, I believe. Maybe, maybe uh, you know, there might be another medium or so, but that Phoenix Hawk, and it still has all of its uh, armor or structure quirks, I believe, as well. So yeah. it's tanky for such a fast medium. And we saw in uh, MRBC Phoenix Hawks being used a lot more often to really supplement those lights and uh, a lot of small pulses and stuff involved there so it doesn't have quite the same amount of firepower as it does in uh, in the live client because of the stock mode but still it has that combination of reach and it's all pinpoint yeah I, I actually agree with you I really like that Phoenix Hawk and I think on Canyon that Phoenix Hawk retains its usefulness I think it could be a really good mech to bring on here because I think it gives you that added mobility gives you the ability uh you can bring jump jets i believe on the phoenix hawk is that true it's one of these yeah one of the phoenix hawk one has jump jets on it has that large laser goes 97 kph that's not a bad deal for canyon network especially if you want to play cap and i wouldn't be surprised to see cap but the other thing to consider here is in the stock mode with the mechs that we have there's not a lot of really long range engagements outside of lrms you don't have er larges you don't have er ppcs you don't have those options so now maybe you spread out and you kind of keep your distance and you try and play around the edges of the map with the kind of wolf pack strategy like yep. we saw previously and like we said before you know you can get this big push and this cleanup and then try and go get to the caps but the lack of mobility slows that down not only that yeah. but the lack of the pinpoint uh high front loaded damage weaponry um, it takes longer to kill some of these mechs. So as we even saw, Russian Jade Falcon had a pretty solid push there. They knew they had to go. They went better, I think, than we saw 42. So they, they went more and faster. They had a little bit of a weird split at the end where they lost a couple key mechs. Even though they had advantages, they didn't take advantage and get the focus fire where they needed. And of course, the, you know, the... It just took too long to get the job done. They had the aggression they needed, but they didn't get the job done. Yeah. And, of course, the weapon systems uh, causing them some issues as well. Just not having the DPS they needed. Good spreading by Dude's Club. And that extra delay caused uh, huge issues there. Yeah, and that push, you know, it was a good push. But like we said, the Black Knight got to wait a little bit. Get a little antsy dropping off the side there too early. If he had waited a little bit, I think he would have had an even more effective push, a faster push, and maybe could have gotten those mechs down without taking as many losses. Could have saved your hunchback. It's a little faster of a mech. Maybe, maybe, maybe there were just too many errors by RJF in that match to really say any one of them cost them the game, but you just can't, can't have a game like that. Like I said, they need to just take that, start over from scratch. We know they have it in them, so just here we go. Second match, Candy Network, different map. Um, and this is their opportunity to uh, to get it straightened out. Now, obviously, RJF extremely familiar with Canyon. Maybe not with the uh, yeah. this uh, stock mode, you know, and stuff like that. But they know the map. They know what they've seen before. But uh, you know, Dudes Club. How much do you think they practiced Canyon Network? Either team. How much do you think that they actually worked on this or ha are having this in their back pocket? Or was Canyon Network a kind of like, let's just do something different because that was terrible, you know? Yeah. We didn't see RGF take it back to to Rubelite to say, well, let's just try it again. Maybe we can do it better on the other side, which we've seen so often yeah, in, we have in seen competitive that. play where it's like, let's just try it again. Let's just clean it up. Uh, but this is just tossing, like, let's just do it. Let's just get something different here and make it work. 
and maybe RJF trying to lean on its familiarity with this map. Maybe they've memorized every single ramp location, every single rock they can use for cover. Is that going to come into play here? Uh, but I would not be surprised to see that Phoenix Hawk in use and really effectively four lights on the field just trying to control the caps. They had a little bit of a disconnected player issue there, but they got him back in. Players are readying up and we'll be heading in shortly for drop two. Of course, <coughs> Dudes Club 1-0 on the series. Let's do it. Yeah, here we go. Dudes Club, if they win this match, they will move on. RJF will drop down to the loser's bracket. RJF, if they win, will force a game three. I think this is a little bit of a surprise. I mean, depending on who you who you talk to, I think a lot of people were considering RGF to be kind of a shoe in here. But Dudes Club coming in uh, really strong out of the gate here, and yeah. uh, I think they're making people, including myself, giving us a little bit of a pause. You know, don't sell them short. They're here to play as well, and uh, it's time to give them the spotlight. See whether or not they're able to uh, take it to the long haul. Yeah, I really like their opening strategy too. Like we talked about that Phoenix Hawk going in kind of the Wolfpack strategy. Good call by Dudes, uh, Dudes Club. Basically made before the, the match actually starts to do that, to bring those mechs. We'll have to see if they can do the same sort of thing on Canyon. All right, we are underway. We do have an Archer on the field for Dudes Club, bringing those LRMs. So right back to the yeah, LRMs here. Rated out. And the Phoenix Hawk is traded off. Maybe they thought, well, they think we're going to bring the Phoenix Hawk. Let's bring the rain. What is their Annihilator bringing? Slow, slow Annihilator. AC-10. So they do have an LRM boat on the field, but they still have plenty of pinpoint for trading. Now, once again, long ranges here. PPCs will be a little bit less effective at range. Dude's Club does try to go to Epsilon, but he takes a bunch of damage with that uh, Javelin, so... Maybe not quite the engagement they wanted to do with uh, RJF coming down the left side towards Epsilon. Only able to get the two caps. If I were them, I would have gone probably for Kappa on the other side. I think it's a little easier and it's a little against the traditional movement. Uh, but that's the choice they made. Surlon down to 92%, so he did take uh, probably more damage than he was willing to take. Yeah, a lot of that in that right arm there. Uh, but definitely got hit in a lot of places but here come those LRMs come into play Banshee down to 83% though lots of spread I think that was a strike getting a great hit on him hitting every little bit of his mech but uh, the hunchback getting pushed we have a movement up on the left side the lights are coming around trying to jump on this 4p he's a little bit caught out but they're uh, outrunning the rest of their team a little bit that commando I think is gonna take a few hits here comes some uh, more LRM rain but they're using the rock to their advantage to not get hit they really want Very this Hunchback dead. By RJF. This Hunchback, the longer he stays alive, the better it is for Dudes Club. But He's doing a great job spreading. Down. They took his hunch off, though, so he's down to just two lasers, and I think they're going to call off of him. But the push is continuing here. They have that Annihilator with the rest of their group, so they're kind of moving at the pace of the Annihilator. He's breaking left, because even if he's slow, he can still get sight lines on this left side. The faster movers moving up that right side. Locust down to 52%. That commando right in the middle of the group. They're just mixing it up and forcing them to panic. But it looks like he got legged. They took the locust, locust out. Does go down. The commando's still alive at 27%. Club is dropping off the edges here. I think this push is going to get real ugly real fast for Dudes Club. RJF aggressive and staying aggressive. I just don't see how they can turn this around. This is a great push by them. That annihilator down to 25%. A lot of hurt mechs on both sides, but it's starting to tip in Banshee favor of. Down of uh, Russian Jade Falcon. They did lose their Wolfhound, and they also lost the Commando, so two of their light mechs are dead. But in terms of armor remaining here, Dudes Club is really suffering, and they're bringing those, uh, that Stalker facing off against that Archer, and they take him down. Three mechs remaining for Dudes Club, and there is the aggression I think we were waiting to see, and it was exactly. done much better than Drop 1. Russian Jade Falcon coming out incredibly strong around that corner even towing that annihilator i think they paced it based on the annihilator reaching that corner and they kept him with their push the entire time i expected him to still be all the way back in the corner by upsilon but he never let go of w and they got the job done in spectacular fashion how about that for an answer to dude's yeah, club first wow. round win 
It was now 1-1 on the series. Very, very good. That's that. I think that's a little bit more like what we expect to see from Russian Jade Falcon, I think. Just based on yeah. the amount of times we've seen him in the past, that was classic gameplay from Russian Jade Falcon. And I think Dude's Club was just really caught off guard. And, you know, I don't think those LRMs did them any favors. Uh, no, I, I think Dude's Club was set up for this kind of long-range, slow engagement, like what we just saw in Game 1. <laughs> RJF said, you know what, that didn't work for us. We're not going to do that again and just steamroll them. I mean, a constant movement, like you said. Pushing good power play position, by the Annihilator definitely. And just moving forward saying, you know what, we're just full speed ahead and full speed 32 kph for the annihilator so <laughs> they did a great job keeping but him very in play, good though. job that annihilator pilot yeah did a great job that's of course den airwalker you know a lot of people know that guy and he did a great job just keeping the pressure uh yeah keeping the w button held down breaking off to that left side to maintain sight lines even when he started falling behind he was still outputting dps and his damage numbers really showed it um, they had a dude's club back on their heels and that the lights just so aggressive, the lights getting up there, harassing that front hunchback hunchback did a good job staying alive for a while. They ultimately, I think left him for last taking yeah, out that did. hunch. They uh, effectively neutered that Mac. You don't want to leave him alone too long, but they neutered a massive amount of DPS potential taking that 4P off the field. That's seven medium lasers destroyed in the matter of seconds on that push. And those lights also did a great job. Once they took the hunchback down, they or neutralized the hunchback, moving forward into kind of the backfield. So now all of a sudden, if you're Dudes Club, you're set up for this long range kind of map control engagement, I think. And here comes RJF around the corner with a, you know, an Annihilator, a Banshee. They're rolling around the corner, putting fire down. And oh, by the way, you've got a Commando and a Locust kind of running around off to the side. What do you do? You know, you've got guys starting to back up. You know, had a couple guys drop off the side of the canyon. They're basically out of the fight. I mean, uh, it's just they were not ready for that, obviously. It was chaos on their end. It's tough to make. I mean, you know, they called one strat, and the strat that they called was perfectly countered by what RJF was running. Um, so they're going to have to now, like I said, the same thing that happened to RJF in game one. Dude's club, take that game, put it in the corner, and, and don't worry about that one so much. And it's going to be up to Dude's club this and, time as to what map yeah. they're going to end up on. So I don't. Th exactly. I will be very surprised if we end up on Canyon again. I will be very surprised. But we'll have to see once the map ban happens as to which one they end up picking. Um, the that strategy that we just saw that is a classic classic strategy that we've seen used several times before coming around that yep. epsilon corner it all starts with harassing the light that gets there to try and cap they almost always send a light up that right side to try and get that early cap they got his head down they took him off the cap he did not successfully cap it got him to back up that takes away sight lines I don't think they had yeah. any clue that they were coming around that corner until they breached around Epsilon Corner. By then, you're in their trap. It's almost too late. Uh, they're, we're heading into the map voting now. Let's see where they end up. But that's um, Rublite banned again by Russian Jade Falcon. RJF does not want to play it. Let's see, dudes. Wow. He says we're going to play Canyon again. Interesting. Wow, okay. And that's kind of what we were thinking is the... Um, that didn't work. Let's try something different. <laughs> that can yeah, get you in well, trouble. They, that can get, can you, in get you in trouble too. But it can also, if they know what they did wrong and they're ready for whatever's going to come at them this time. Yeah. You know, maybe they won't and bring the worms this time. The, the strategy game, right? So they say, okay, this is what RJF did last time on this map. We're going to do something to counter that. Yeah, and is RJF going to do, do the same thing? Or are yeah. they going to bring LRMs now? Like, this is this is going to be interesting. I have no idea what's going to happen here. They have switched sides, though. Yeah. So that means RGF doesn't have that hard Epsilon corner push at the very least from that northern side of the map. Maybe Dude's Club yeah. is going to try and do the same thing. Now, they didn't bring necessarily a... RGF didn't really bring a surprising deck. They used a lot of the same mechs we've been seeing. 
but they did that. They played it very power, differently. Yeah. You know, moving mid range, moving mid range is like they can hit at distance, but they go together. They armor share. They put the damage downfield uh, as they're moving, and they really focus well on specific targets to take them off of the field. Yeah, and and so you're right. Different side of the map, maybe you keep doing what you did before, but now you're in a situation where the map favors that strategy. This is kind of that fun guessing game right before the map starts. And again, stock modes, you kind of need to commit to a strategy before the game starts. I think RJF committed to their strategy before the game start. I don't think there was a call that was made that says, you know what, we need to push Epsilon corner. I think that Annihilator was, you know, W key the entire time. He was just moving to a set corner regardless of what Dudes Club did. And I think the same for Dudes Club. So it's kind of that guessing game now. Do you want to change things up and take the risk? Do you want to keep doing the same thing and hope that the opponent does the same thing as well? You know, so it's we really definitely going to be tough to say. I got to say, though, we are definitely seeing a lot more maps in play than we've ever seen in a world championship before. Yeah. Though. Like, um, I'm pretty excited that there's been a decent spread. I guess the redheaded stepchild of this one is Grim Plexus because we haven't seen it even once yet. But there's still plenty of time and a lot of games left to be played. And mm -hmm. maybe people are keeping that in their back pocket as a wild card as well. If they've got strats designed for maps, you know, and if they've practiced it, if they've scrimmed, because I know these teams are scrimming, uh, you know, if they're prepared on those maps, why wouldn't you want to go and see whether or not the, your hard work is going to pay off or not? So we're just waiting yeah, for these teams to get ready up. Everything but Grim. Yeah. Everything but grim. But I personally, I love Candy Network. I mean, I know we saw a lot of it, and a lot of people are sick of it. But like, like I said, it's the DE Dust 2 of MechWare Online. It's such a great, balanced map, uh, and it it's a well-designed map. I hope they never touch it. Don't touch it. Don't touch it. But, uh, no, it's, it's a great map. I love it, and I'm really glad to see them bringing it back here. Uh, and I'm glad to see it's in the, still in the rotation as an option. And it's, it's been just enough time that I think a lot of us have been like, you know what? It's been enough time. Let's see some more Canyon action. And, uh, and Started, we're getting, starting to miss it a little bit. Starting to miss it a little bit. You, you kind of want the reminder of what it looks like. And, uh, you know, RGF, that was a great push strat and really caught dudes. This is, this is back to a lot of the fundamentals that we talked about even last year with the light play. Back to kind of, you know, we've been talking so much about how essential the lights are for capping and, uh, you know, the speed and the harassment. But there's always that extra little part that we haven't really touched on at all during this semi-final series so far. Is the sight. The knowledge. Knowing where the enemy is. Uh, I think a lot of teams right now have been kind of presenting themselves. They know where each other are and yeah. they begin to trade. But... Uh, I think that maybe took a little bit of the emphasis off of getting eyes on your enemy. When they didn't see Russian Jade Falcon for the whole first part of that match, I would have been like, somebody find them. Where's main body? What are they doing? Get eyes on them. And if they caught them early enough, I think they could have been able to back up and set up. That hunchback would, would have never been as far forward as he was if they knew he was yeah. coming. They got caught with their pants down. Big time. And that... It's kind of fun for me because for those of you who have watched our previous years, uh, you know, Mech Warrior Championship streams, etc. One of the things that I've always loved is the information warfare side of this, the info tech, if I may say. And that that information warfare aspect, I feel like is so underrepresented and in lack of maybe understood in the in the general population. But that's what makes competitive play to me so much more exciting is this concept of, you know, light mech's main job, at least in previous years, and, and we'll see in this year, this is kind of the first map that really shows that example, is to gather information. What are they bringing? What are they doing? Where are they? If you don't have that information, traditionally speaking, you've lost, period. If you don't know what they are, what they've brought and what they're doing, the game's already over without even firing a shot. In this particular match, I think that holds exactly true. They didn't have all the information they needed to make the right call. Even before they came around Epsilon Corner, to me, that game was over. You know, this this was, I, I don't know if you guys noticed, but I, I'm a little excited because I was getting a little worried after watching the first couple matches here that it's just going to be, you know, the same thing of just sitting back and shooting. And, you know, there's, there's excitement there as well, but 
what I've always enjoyed about this game, and there's been a couple seasons where this has been very prevalent, is having a playbook that has options, and then on the flip side, yeah. having to plan for <clears throat> any of those possibilities. And if everybody just keeps doing the same thing over and over again, then it just comes down to who executes better. But I really like the flavor of having another option that you have to have in the back of your mind as being an op as a possibility. And then, of course, having to have that light mech do his job to give you the info early enough to tell you if that's what they're doing. R RGF just bought, brought the fire back into it for me with that push. <laughs> now, I don't know if they're going to get away with something like that again. We'll have to see. Especially if, you know, these long-range, you know, just poke fest or LRM fest, if that really truly is the meta, you might not get away with a hard push like that every time. But I think RGF just reminded Dudes Club there are other options in this battle. Yeah. Bandit is all jazzed up, and we are ready for round three of this match. Not quite win or go home. You will drop into the loser's bracket if you lose this match, but certainly not the place you want to be starting off in the uh, semifinals in the loser's bracket. So both these teams, a lot, of, a lot to play for in this round. Well, we are seeing the Archer back on the field again for Dudes Club, but we have a really hard right side Hunchback 4P, Javelin, Wolfhound, Locust, all breaking for Kappa side. They're not doing in the heavy meantime, We've got mechs heading towards Kappa, or they're kind of heading... Nah, no, not quite Kappa. That looks like a Theta movement towards the Kappa line for our uh, RJF and the Annihilator, Awesome, and Stalker. It's going to be interesting to see if these mechs moving over to Kappa for Dudes Club get some eyes on that canyon. They could put some fire down if they catch these assault mechs down there. Some Doesn't look like they're going to be able to do that, though. Interesting movement by both teams. You rarely oh, see main bodies eyes go... eyes downfield, it looks like. You rarely see both teams really going to that Kappa side. Kappa has always been more of a, a light max playground. But here we go. Like, we've got these big guys moving up Radio Tower side and getting harassed now by those light max, And they are That's, not going to overstay their welcome. downfield by the light max there. Kind of catching what's going on. Stalker out in the open. Some LRM fire coming down on that Stalker. PPCs as well. They're forcing him down off the canyon, and he can't get down yet. Absolutely. He is going That's, to stay up and that take is a lot brutal. of damage. You know, that early warning by those Light Max, as we saw, that info tech just got those guys really caught out there, and that Stalker taking punishment for that maneuver. 57%. Still not out of range. He's still taking LRM fire. Finally breaks the locks, gets into cover, but that was a big moment for Dudes Club to start off this range, this uh, this match. Now, in terms of cap, it is 2-2, but we do have a Black Knight, Pelmashek, up on Theta right now, flipping that over for his team. So it's going to be a 3-2, and, and they're back capping Kappa, Kappa as well, so a 4 cap in favor of Russian Jade Falcon. So they lost a lot of armor early on, but they've gained field position, and we've seen teams forced back into this corner by Dudes Club here before. We've seen yeah, teams get stuck like here, this position by Dudes Club. and they're getting effectively surrounded at this point as well. So while they they're did get a great advantage there, the radio tower. they need to be careful not to squander that advantage. Yep, these light mechs now coming in. Ooh, great airstrike across the Commando and Wolfhound, though. But they are getting back hits on that Banshee and the Archer, and they're going to start thinking twice. Now they've got... Um, Flitzamat they do have a hunchback, hunchback down there trying to get some I identification on him, but uh, looks like the lights are backing off a little bit for RJF. The hunchback was able to give him down a by room. Epsilon. That is a locust for Dudes Club going to Epsilon. Looks like he's going to try and flip it. He is on the point right now. He's supported by the javelin. They definitely need that. I'm not sure that. RJF has anything to counter this at this point. They have a javelin coming in. It's going to be a javelin against the locust and javelin. Let's see if he. Oh, he's not continuing on. They're going to concede it, but they still hold that three cap. They've taken Epsilon. They're Looks actually. Like the javelin will come up a little bit, maybe to try and catch them from going into Sigma. But they got the wolfhound there, giving him some scratch too. He's not able to move over and contest, which would would be a terrible idea for that javelin to actually engage. But they're bringing Terminator in that Hunchback up. Wolfhound getting a lot of free burns. And now we're still seeing Russian Jade Falcon uh, hemorrhaging a lot of armor here. Even though they have the cap lead, they're not trading very well. Yeah, and I like this Archer actually in this playing style. He's got just the ability to put some damage downrange on any of these mechs. It's hard for them to stay in the cover because of how spread out everyone is. 
I actually, uh, I kind of like the strategy So we here. have the Javelin coming up, I think, to cut off the other Javelin as he moves to Gamma, but they already have a Locust at Gamma, but we might have ourselves a one-on-one -on -one fight here, Javelin on Javelin. They gotta be careful that Black Knight is able to see him, but they do get the three cap. in the Banshee goes down. He was basically being harassed by lights in the backfield at Radio Tower and taking fire from Theta. The main body of Dudes Club right now is in trouble. There are lights behind them. Theta has got open shots on them. So they got the three cap now, but yeah, the, the, the lights are getting involved in the fight now. They're trying to clean up on the rest of these guys, and they are effectively surrounded. And we're starting to see uh, the numbers now switching for Dudes Club. They're starting to lose a lot of that armor. 10% hit from the strike. So they don't have, uh, Dudes Club does not have a ticket lead. They have a cap lead, but not a ticket lead. They cannot afford th to have their main body fall. And I think RJF is doing a good job here, starting to get aggressive and uh, start dropping some of these mechs, or at least yeah, get the hits. Those lights at Kappa are a big problem right now. And there's no answer for them right now either. The, all the lights are yeah. involved at trying to maintain the three cap at the cost of their main body. So the key is going to be, can the main body stay alive for long enough? They've actually pulled the archer down. I'm not sure I, I would move the archer down. I'd probably send the hunchback after those light mechs, but the awesome and the hunchback are kind of now on their own. They've got like one rock they're dancing behind trying to, to stay undercover, but this hunchback just doesn't have any range to engage these guys. The javelin getting really involved, doing some pretty extreme range medium lasering, but he's doing enough to just harass, getting the shots in on the annihilator and making yeah, it so he can't ignore them. the Annihilator is trying to turn around and engage. That Javelin's kind of in a waiting position. He's going to instead go after the Awesome. That Annihilator is never down. coming out of that pit. That Annihilator is now stuck down there. Yes. <laughs> There's the and here comes the Locust trying to support this. Awesome's going to be in trouble. He needs his Hunchback to come help him out. And he's got the assistance. He's not going to be able to shoot those PPCs at the Javelin, but having that Hunchback there is going to allow him to escape, and the Locust is there as well. If they take this, this Javelin out, it's going to be big. Oh, and There's he gets ragged, the javelin. and the they javelin get gets down. taken That's down. Big. That's big for Dudes Club, and their ticket, they're about to get a ticket lead here. They're getting the four cap. The g Gamma is switching back, though. they're losing Gamma as well, so this Ooh, is uh, the awesome still anyone's taken down. game. Back and forth, a lot... Uh, Russian Jade Falcon is on the... They're not feeling too good right now, basically, no. Mr. And the Stark. the goes down for Russian Jade Falcon. They've got a lot of damage mechs. They're still up. They need to start slowing this down a little bit. Gets us in cover. Helmashek and the Black Knight goes down. These lights are kind of moving up for Dude's Club, trying to take advantage of some very damaged mechs, and that Stalker is still alive. The Annihilator is about to come around the corner, stalked. and there's going to be some big hits there. Annihilator on Annihilator action. But the And the Stalker is at Theta for RJF. He goes down. He had the Javelin and the Hunchback on either side of him. If if Dudes Club can maintain a three cap, and especially if they can get a four cap, they will win this. The tickets are close enough, even though they're down on tickets. They've killed enough of Russian Jade yeah. Falcon mechs. Dan Airwalker has gone down. I think Dudes Club has this in the bag, provided they don't do something really poor and here. And Feta is They've flipping now as well. A little bit. At Kappa, RJF has three mechs remaining, trying to basically take out this archer. They need to focus on the archer and the archer alone. Get him down one mech at a time. Awesome instead is pulled off to engage the hunchback. The he's archer's gonna let them to the cap. Archer. Yeah, the archer's gonna let them cap, and he's going to try and finish off this awesome, knowing that the awesome that's cannot the right return play. fire. That's gonna buy them a little bit more time at Kappa, but the awesome the awesome ends up getting taken down. That awesome yeah, needed awesome to stay goes alive. Down. There's only two mechs left. I, I just don't think there's enough mechs to flip these caps on the field. They don't have the lead in tickets. They don't have the lead in caps. And the javelin right there to flip it match. right back. This is going in favor of Dudes Club. What a strong, you know, Dudes Club really getting the good trades in there when they needed them most. Yeah. Uh, and then I'm pretty sure that that all started off with exactly what we were talking about, getting that info. They got those light mechs up on Kappa and saw them coming through that canyon. canyon. And that stalker just getting mauled down. Because... He was down to almost 50% in the first engagement of the game. I mean, that's that's just, you can't recover from that very well. It was the javelin. You could see that javelin come up. He was making a run across the top, which is what you're supposed to do. Keep moving. And you saw him twist the torso just a little more when he saw those guys make sure that he had three assault mechs coming up the... 
uh, towards Theta from the Canyon Pass. Let the guys know, got the locks, and then the Archer just starts firing down range. You have the awesome PPCs unloading on that Stalker, and that was it. We've got Annihilator versus Commando. He can't aim low enough to get the leg on him. Just ram him! Oh, and he down actually he takes him down. His friends show up too late. Just a consolation prize there for that Annihilator. And but, there you have it. I would I would say this is a bit of a surprise. Dudes Club coming out strong in two of their three matches came out very strong and, and I feel like outplayed RJF in those two wins. Absolutely. I mean that was just that was an exciting match too. I mean that, that was, was a lot of really good gameplay. Uh Dudes Club really doing the work and uh you know, they got the job done for sure. Annihilator, Den Airwalker Able to pull 749 damage, but just wasn't enough. I mean, both teams were very hurt. Yes. Definitely, but... Uh, and I think uh, RJF did a good job trying to come back from it. There was a point in the middle of that match where I really felt like it was in the balance, right? We had the light mechs for RJF coming up behind the main body. They were harassing. There was just a few, you know, the awesome, the archer and the hunchback hanging out kind of where they started and they were getting harassed from both sides they were taking a lot of damage the archer drops down and that's when the light mechs for dudes club kind of came back into the fight they had been capping they came back in the fight started taking some of the pressure off of their main body and that was when it turned the balance i think there was a there was a point where i think it really could have gone either way yeah i mean i really got to give it to those rjf light mechs they were doing a good job just keeping dudes club yeah. spinning in circles but some of the early on damage like it just was too much i never saw rjf come uh on top when it came to their overall armor just based purely on percentage the percentages yep. i never saw rjf take the lead on that they had a 3-2 cap lead at least for a while they got the ticket lead but you know a lot of that you know dudes clubs got their mechs out there capping but you've got your light mechs in there getting in the scrum trying to catch up. If you got that many mechs shooting at those five dudes club mechs and yeah. you're not able to get ahead on armor, that's that's where it really got away from RGF. They had everybody on deck trading, 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 but I never saw RGF take the lead. And even though they had more mechs out there getting the job done. Yeah. And uh and that, so then they had that ticket lead, but they didn't get the kills they needed. And so then it slowly started just tipping the other direction. As we saw, the tick, final tickets were very close. Probably would have been closer if they had a little bit more of a fight at the end there. But it was just, they, they, their mechs didn't have any more gas left on them. They were out of gas and just didn't have enough armor to take it to the finish. And on top of Dudes Club doing really good controlling the caps and flipping that one back in their favor i agree that was an exciting round though i, I liked that that was some kind of had a little really bit of everything right there. a little bit yeah. of everything for sure a little bit of everything and i think maybe if they had instead of trying it's tough it's a tough call because i think that the light mechs for rgf were doing a good job not letting dudes club get get comfortable on that right yeah. side because they were kind yeah. of buttoned up and that's a tough position to play from when you've got everybody all on that island you know and they had the hunchback yeah. the hunchback did a great job trying to suppress those lights if you're gonna spend essentially two of your lights to spend the entire match harassing it needs to result you need to get some the kills. kills yeah absolutely and they could have used those two lights to do anti-light duty on the west or the east side of the map and that might have gone a little bit further for them. But how do you know? How do you know that you're not going to get exactly. those kills? Exactly, yeah. And that, like you said, that was kind of the moment where we where we had the match in the balance. RJF really had all hands on deck. The lights are assing. You had fire coming in from Theta. They needed the kills, and they didn't get the kills. Dude, dude did a good job kind of moving around, twisting on a very limited space. I mean, that's a narrow stretch on the canyon. There's like two rocks there to hide behind with three mechs. I mean, they were kind of trading places. One guy would go around the rock. One guy would go around the rock. It really felt almost disorganized. But at the same time, they managed to keep all three mechs alive. They managed to kind of withstand that long enough that their lights came in back at Theta and started getting some harassing fire in. 
And when that happened, like we said, it kind of titched, tilted the match back into Dude's Club favor, and they were able to ride that to their uh, opening opening round of the semifinals. They have a win, so they're going to be moving up in the winner's bracket here.